What is up you guys? So in this one, we're going to talk about the difference between continuous valued and discrete valued signals. They have nothing to do with continuous time and discrete time signals. Okay. So it is really important to do this distinction. We're going to talk about what a continuous valued signal is, what a discrete valued signal is, and how to go from continuous valued to discrete valued signals using methods such as sampling and hold, rounding and truncation. Some MATLAB illustrations are going to be given along the way to clarify many of the concepts that we're going to mention along the way. Okay. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Let's do the distinction between continuous valued versus discrete valued signals. Now there's a lot of people that mistaken continuous valued with continuous time. It's not the same thing at all. Actually, they're totally unrelated. <laughs> when talking about continuous time versus discrete time, it's all about time and thus continuous time. That is your time is continuous. The notion of time is continuous. Whereas in discrete time, the notion of time is discrete. Whereas when you're talking about continuous valued and discrete valued, all we mean that it's the function itself. So if my function X of T or X of N, whether let it be continuous or discrete time, I don't care if the set of values that this function takes belongs in R or some sort of continuous level, right? Then, or maybe R plus, I don't care whether it be continuous time or discrete time. If the set of values this signal takes is not finite, then we say it is continuous valued else it is discrete valued. So an example on discrete valued would be, for example, a signal that is, I don't know, let's say the signal is one that takes on random integers between one and four, right? Um, let's say we pick, 10 samples and let's plot it. So here you have a discrete valued signal. Why discrete? Because the set of values the signal takes is either one, two, three, or four. It doesn't have any other option, right? So the signal is discrete. So in this case, X of T or X of N, both could work, huh? And actually your X of T in that case would so it belo belongs to a certain collection, right? Certain finite value. Your X of T in this case would be a sort of sample and hold. So if you were to have a continuous time signal, but discrete valued, it would look something like this. So a discrete, so a continuous version of this signal that you see in front of you would be something like this. So let me do something like, like this. Actually, you're not, this is not totally out of the scope of the course, but it's all for visualization sake. Now let me plot my Y and there you go. Let me just change the Y limits. So let me put it from zero to five. And there you go. This is the continuous version of your signal, right? It's continuous time, but discrete values. As you can see, it only takes on values that are one, two, three, or four. Back again, if we want to see the discrete version, it looks like this. So three, here's a continuous three. One, here's a continuous one. Four, here's your four. Four again, here's your other four. And so on. So one thing to keep in mind is that continuous or discrete valued signals have nothing to do with continuous time or discrete time signals. And actually one thing to keep in mind here is that in order for a signal to be processed digitally, it must be discrete in time, right? And its values must be discrete and hence, if a signal is discrete in time, 
and discrete in value. So what you see here, this signal is a digital signal. Now if the signal is called the digital signal, now if the signal to be processed is in analog form, as you can see over here, it is converted to a digital signal, the one you see over here, by simply just sampling at regular intervals. So if I sample this guy over here at regular intervals of one, so let me just, you know, plot my time instances. So in red, let's say, oh, we did a big mistake. So it's like, it's going to be like this T and X of T as such. And there you go. So here, what we're doing, if we forget about this, is that we're sampling our signal to obtain this discrete value, discrete time or digital signal, right? You can also choose to sample at other instances. Let's say you shift. Instead of sampling over here, you start sampling, I don't know, maybe here, and then you continue regularly. So what I'm doing is that I shift, let's say by seven, then let's sample at X instead of O, and there you go. So you'd also obtain the same signal over here, right? Try it. Actually, there is a process that is super well known. It's called quantization. And quantization is the process of going from here to here, from continuous valued to discrete valued. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say I've got a completely random signal, say, it looks something like this, totally random, right? And I want to, you know, discretize it in values. So what you come and do here is that you sample and hold. That is, let's say you start here, you sample here, you hold until the next sampling instance. That is, let's say here. Again, you hold, then you sample. Hold again, sample, hold, then sample hold over here, sample, and so on, right? So what you see over here is that we're transforming this continuous valued signal, the white signal, into the red one, that is discrete in value, right? This process is called quantization. And it is usually seen as a approximation process because you're approximating your continuous valued signal right? As a discrete valued one. What I said right here is that I'm sampling and holding. Other terms that are used or other methods that are used is by rounding or truncation, okay? For example, um, say I've got a signal where I'm allowed to take values from 0 through 15. Now the continuous valued signal is quantized onto these integer values. Thus, if I have an incoming signal that arrives at, I don't know, maybe 8.58, I say it's an 8. So I've approximated my 8.58 by the value 8. And this is referred to as rounding. So, so in rounding, a value such as 7.56 becomes 7. Whereas in truncation, the same exact value becomes an 8. Okay? Now we will talk about analog to digital conversion in future lectures, but it's always good to keep in mind or to do this distinction between continuous valued and discrete valued signals, that is, Continuous valued are signals that take on continuous values, whereas discrete valued are those that take on discrete values that come from a finite set. And it is always possible to go from continuous value to discrete valued through methods such as sampling and holding, rounding and truncation. That's all I have to say for this lecture on continuous valued versus discrete valued signals. We did a lot of stuff over here. Thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, 
please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have any questions whatsoever kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below and i'll make sure i'll get to it as soon as possible also consider donating to my patreon account any amount you wish i'll leave the link down in the description section below thanks for watching and i'll see you in future lectures